there, it's Natasha and thank you so much for joining me again. I am having so much fun with my card making at the moment so I've been really enjoying getting creative and today is no different. I'm starting off with some Broken China Vintage Photo Hickory Smoke and some Black Soot Distress Oxide Inks. Now I am going to change this a little bit as I go but for the minute I have a non-stick sheet here. This is just the little uh, replacement mat for the glass media mat. It's just a tiny little non-stick sheet that I really love using. Uh, I don't even own the glass media mat at all. Uh, but anything that is kind of non-stick and plasticky. I have put down some of the inks on my um, non-stick sheet added some water and then I'm going to pick them up using some of the Tim Holtz watercolor cardstock. It's important to use watercolor cardstock here because we are going to be adding so much water and lots of layers that normal cardstock will not um, stand up to this kind of use. So it's really important to use watercolor. I am drying it in between each layer here because this is what oxides are really good for is layering up on top of each other. Now I'm kind of going for a little bit of a rust effect or an old effect here so hence why I'm using the browns and the blues and now I'm going to pick up a little bit more of the scraps that were left on that paper just to get a few more dots and splots and texture all over that page and then dry them again with my heat gun and if there's too much moisture I will just um, dab them away with a tissue. I'm using some chip sapphire here and the vintage photo and then the purple is actually the seedless preserves uh, distress oxide again add a bit more water and then put my page down on top of it so sometimes even when you kind of pull your card up and you think and eh, not really what I was going for it's really important to just try and keep going and then see if you like it more and more because I was not liking this piece when I began however I must admit with the finished card I really like it so I can kind of see where the blues and the purple are creating that rusty effect and I'm really liking where the card is going now. So once I have done the background I'm going to put that aside to dry a little bit more. I have this heart set of dies here and I'm going to use the three kind of smaller ones but any hearts that you have in your stash will be good. I have die cut them out of some plain white cardstock and then I'm going to be using this uh, aluminium foil tape. Now this is kind of from the hardware store or you can get it in two dollar shops here in New Zealand and I am just going to cut some of this off. It has an adhesive backing to it. You can also use tin foil for this uh, which works just as well. However this is already um, has the adhesive backing so that is one advantage to it. I am going to take off the backing paper and then pop these down on my hearts. There are so many cool techniques that you can do with this paper and a really cool one is to add lots of little pieces of this metal tape overlapping each other time and time again and then use a stylus to kind of put in some metallic or metal effects uh, into the foil. However, I'm not quite doing that today. I'm cheating a little bit and I'm going to be using an embossing folder just to skip that step. However, it is really, really fun and there are so many cool techniques. So don't, don't let this video put you off of what this tape can do. <laughs> also, I guess that you could use some silver mirror card stock uh, to do this technique. I haven't tried it with that, but I assume that it would work just as well. So if you have some of that in your stash, then give that a go too. Uh, for the excess tape that is hanging over the sides of the heart, some of it I'm kind of tearing off so there's not too much behind them, but some of it I am just folding behind and that is just fine as well because we won't see the back of these obviously. So I have covered my three little hearts and then I just kind of rumbled through my very small stash of embossing folders. And I quite like that one, but I also like the one in the middle here. So I did one with that, uh, the, one of the big ones, and I was kind of having around a play around some paints. However, I decided to go with this big Darius one here. I don't even know the name of this folder, and I don't know if it's still available. But honestly, have a look what's in your stash, and I'm sure you would find something fun uh, to use. And I'm kind of just having a play around with which part of the pattern I want to be on the heart. So... This particular embossing folder has sort of a quilted pattern of lots of different patterns. So I ran all three of my hearts through with that same embossing folder and this is the gorgeous outcome that you get. Now these are very, very shiny at the moment. So I want to add a little bit of kind of extra to them. 
So there is a couple of different options. You could use something like black gesso or some black acrylic paint. I'm going to go with the acrylic paint for today and I just put a tiny little dab on each one, enough that you can kind of cover the surface with a paintbrush. No rhyme or reason, we are just trying to get the black paint into all of the little uh, kind of nooks and crannies that the embossing folder created. Again, you don't have to have an embossing folder, you can create your own one using a stylus or even just a lead pencil, uh, works really well and you can put your own pattern into the foil. Then I'm just going to use a dry cloth and wipe off most of that black paint. But I just kind of want to skim across the top. I don't want to get all of the paint out of the little um, cracks and crevices. So I want to keep that in there. And this is how they come out. So they are um, a little bit less shiny. And the black paint really enhances all of the features that the embossing folder gave the foil. So I'll just put them down on the paper here that, so you can kind of get a better view. And I want to leave them to dry by themselves. I, I'm not sure if you can use a heat gun on, the, on them. <laughs> I chose to just let them dry while I was going on with the rest of my project. So now I have a brick stencil and my background here. I am using a little damp cloth or a baby wipe just to take away some of the oxide ink. And you'll kind of see it more and more as it dries. It'll kind of uh, become a little bit more obvious. Then I'm taking the same vintage photo distress oxide ink and a little finger dauber and I'm going to add some ink back on. One nice easy trick to remember is that if you're not sure what colors to add back on the top, just add exactly the same ones that you used to create the background itself. And that way you definitely won't have any clashing colors and everything will kind of stay coordinating. So I'm moving on to the chipped sapphire, which kind of looks like a really dark blue. However, I'm just adding it really lightly to create a nice background here and a little bit more interest. Then this is the um, broken china color, so the lighter blue color, and I want to make this kind of quite bright, I guess. It kind of stands out a little bit more. And the good thing, again, about using these oxides is that they do layer up so nicely. So they sit on top of each other rather than kind of falling right into the background um, and melting all together. So now that I've added some ink and moisture back to the background, I am going to dry it again with my heat gun to make sure it is completely dry because I want to do some heat embossing on it. And to do this, I don't want any moisture for um, embossing powder to stick where I don't want it to stick. I had forgotten that I wanted to add some black around the edges, so I'm using that black soot, black soot sorry, Distress Oxide ink, and again a little finger dauber to kind of darken up the edges a little bit. I could have done this after I'd added the embossing too, so it doesn't matter when you do it, <laughs> um, but I just remembered then, so it's better to do things whilst I remember. And here are my hearts, once they are all nice and dry, and they have a really cool effect. I was really stoked with how these came out, and they came out just as I wanted them to. And you can definitely see in this close-up where the kind of black paint stayed around. Um, so now I have this Heidi Swap stamp set here. And the one thing I love about this stamp set is that it has a small and a large of all of the letters. So it is kind of a grungy style. It's not a you know perfect, clean, crisp style, which goes with the style of my card today. And the person that I was making this for, I was making this card for someone else to give to someone. And they just wanted the sentiment to say, love you. So that's what it's got on the card today. Now, obviously the O, um, I ended up needing the little O twice. Um, <laughs> it didn't work out that it was the big O, so that's okay. So I did use a stamping platform to add the first one of the letters, but it's nice and easy just to grab an acrylic block and then take that little O that I needed and some of the Versamark ink again and add it right in the middle there. Now again, the other cool thing about the stamp set is that nothing is kind of lined up and that's what is really fun about the big and small letters is that everything is kind of, you don't have to have it perfect for it to look right, uh, if that makes sense. So I'm melting this nice bright white embossing powder onto my background and it really stands out nicely. I'm adding it onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card base. And because I cut the original piece to four by five and a quarter, it's got a really nice border around the outside that matches the white of the sentiment. Then I have this big cut here, which just had some double-sided tape on the back. And I'm just going to very lightly just place it here. I'm not pressing it down at all. Then I'm taking the middle sized heart and I'm going to pop that down the bottom. Again, this just has the uh, double sided tape on the back. 
And then I have a little foam square on the little heart there, which I want them just to kind of cross over. And before I stuck that one down, I actually wanted to add some dimension. So I do go ahead and add lots of little foam squares, whatever foam you have, fun foam, foam tape, foam squares, it's all the same. Add it on and then pop it up in the corner. And that is my card finished for today. I had so much fun creating this card and again it was a little bit different than my usual style and sometimes that can be really really fun to kind of do something slightly different and play with some of the techniques that I use uh, often in mixed media. So thank you so much for joining me today, I hope you enjoyed this card and I really look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thanks, bye!